Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to First and Ten Atlanta with your boy Ernesto. We are live at the studio, Uptown Studios, which is one of our sponsors, man. And I'm here uh, today with my man, Coach Kelly, who's with uh, the Cab Yellow Jackets. They're located out in the Lafonia area where they say Decatur gets greater, but they're out in that area there. So they're on the east side. Coach Kelly, how long you been coaching, man? Man, I've been coaching about five years now, man. About five, six years. Five, six years. So within those five or six years, man, uh, you coaching? You actually have a team this year? Yes, coach. I coach um, five U. Five U in which park? Decatur Yellow Jackets. The Cab Yellow Jackets. I hear a lot about DYJ. Yes, sir. Y'all got a little history with that stadium over there in that area. They tell me that y'all got some players. That, as a matter of fact, one of your, uh, I think, 11 U coaches um, has went to a Super Bowl that came from that park. A few of them played or pro- went to the league from that park. Tell me a little bit of history. You you know more about it than I do. I'm just I'm just a camera and video guy and the podcast guy. So. Um, well, we had a little, um, our coach, Cole Kite, he was um, uh, NFL quarter, I mean, wide receiver, played with the Patriots and the Green Bay Packers. Patriots and the Green Bay Packers. We gonna, Actually, we're going to have him as a call-in on the show today. That's Coach Kite, the Cab Yellow Jackets. He'll be calling in. Um, tell me a little bit about um, just your journey from getting into pro sport. I mean, I'm saying pro sports, but youth sports here in Atlanta with the kids. How did you get started in it? Because was it because of your child is playing, or you you tell us? Well, actually, um, my nephew got me involved in it when he was younger. Um, I started with his team, started coaching his team, then my son came along. Okay. So quite naturally, um, like most fathers do, who in, in their kids' life, and also like the sports. Right. Most time they could end up coaching the team. Okay. Um, it kind of happened with a coach seeing how I was involved in my child life, and he asked me to come over and help him coach. Then okay. Next year, he gave me the team. Okay, so now you got a 5U team now. How is it coaching 5U? Because that, to me, it seems like that's one of the hardest levels because that's like the first entry level. When do, they start, when do kids actually start playing football here in Atlanta? Um, around about 5U. Five 5U. Five so that's like the first time. So you got that first age group. They don't really know about tackles. Some of them are still kind of clingy to the mom or the, the parent or whatever. Because how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? What made you take that age group? That's first of all. Um, I wanted to start off ground level, man. I I had brought my son up throughout the school. My my older son, who's eleven now, so I, this is last year. Last year was my last year coaching him. Okay. So I, so I want to start off ground level with my my youngest son. And nothing like being able to bring a, a core group up of kids, and, and and then you can really put the talents and stuff put. The coaching into them. So most of these kids, when you catch them at five, you, you in other words, you're saying you're going to follow them all the way through yes, the yes, different yes, age yes, groups. Right. So next year you'll get a six U team. The next yes, year you'll have yes, a seven U team. Yes. So you pretty much try and keep all those. How is it keeping all those kids together from year to year? How is it keeping the core level of team? How do you how do you do that as a coach? Um, as a coach, I mean, it starts with the parents. To be honest with you. As my model has always been, a champion is raised at home. Ah. Um, so it's always start with the parents. You try to get a good group of parents okay so the parents uh, you hear that parents you are the key to this youth football here in the city without the parents and i always say that if you go to the first and ten facebook page you'll notice i put i always when i go out and i cover the different teams because we we, we we go around the city and we cover all first and ten we go around the city we cover all the different teams from it doesn't make we, we don't just follow one or two teams we follow all the teams in the city interview all the coaches but most importantly it was paramount within this show that i cover the parents so if you go to the first and ten facebook page um coach can you turn your phone off that mug just beeping yes, like sir. yeah I that thing just they, yeah, you important must, i don't know what that we, I was on first they 10. may be they may be that hearing was, that you on first and ten but that thing is just beeping ping 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 yeah but anyway we cover all the teams so we're not limited to just covering uh teams on one side of town so we cover most importantly, I wanted to cover the parents from their perspective, what it's like to be a parent. And you were a parent. What, it, what is it really like to be a parent? Not outside of the coaching, the parenting side of it. What are, what are some of the sacrifices with that? Um, actually, I mean, it's a, it's a huge sacrifice. I, I drive an hour every day to take my son to practice. Just for Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Thing. You say you drive an hour every day. An hour, hour One way. way. Out the way, yep, to take my son to, to the camp. So that's two back. hours every day that they have practice, and you have practice how many times a week? Probably about three. So that's six hours a week that you spend to just drive time. That ain't got drive nothing time. to do with the just just to drive. Yep. I mean, some, certain parents like myself willing to take the sacrifice for it's just like a higher education. Um, I used to drive my son down to a different school every morning just because I liked the school better. 
It's so you like the program that D? What did D, what does DYJ offer that other programs? Because you got programs in Henry County, you got programs in Jonesboro. You got these are different cities coming up to Atlanta from where you live at. Yeah. Why not one of those programs that's out that way? What is it about DYJ that makes you want to be there? Well, my son, um, DYJ was one of the top picks for me because of the coaching. Um, I, I could have chose all the top teams to put them on this year. Um, pretty much, but I chose DYJ because the coaches have coached at each level of football. I when mean, you say each, each level, level of football, what do you mean by that statement? They play high school, they play college, they play NFL ball. So if I'm going to get my son, that's, that's exactly what my son wants to do. So it's just like a, a Chinese master or something. Right. You can, if you can study up on the master, then why would you study up on the student? <clears throat> oh, okay. I got what you're saying. So you, you chose that program basically because those coaches went through the same league that your son is going through now and exactly. worked his way all the way up to, from high school exactly. to middle school to high school to college and then the pros. Yeah, I, mean, I got what you're saying. I can only take him so far. I play high school football. You okay. Know, so I what position did you him. play? I played wide receiver. Why, were you any good? One of the best ones Lamar County ever Man, had. Man, I won the defensive uh, back, boy. I'd have, cr <laughs> cloud, I'd have nah. crushed him, boy. No, nah, I'm just saying. So, uh, wide receiver, huh? Yes, yes, sir. All right. What, now, you say you got 11, you son. What, what position does he play? Uh, he plays quarterback. What's his name? His name Darnell Kelly. Um, you can look him up on Instagram at, at thecreatedplayer.com. You hear that? The create, look at that marketing pitch that went in there. He <laughs> went, player. boy. He, hey, that's LaBall Ball Junior over here, boy. He 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 put that pitch in there. What's that? What's that Instagram page um, again? At the created player. At the created player. What position does he play? He plays quarterback. Plays quarterback for like as you know, DYJ. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'll be calling one of the top quarterbacks in his age. Uh oh, here we go. That's another parent. They be, they believe in you know they gotta you gotta you say what you say number one. Yeah, number one, man. I I, I say. In what one, age group? You know, um, eleven U. Eleven U, and you say one of the top players in the, like the Cab County. You say. I say in the nation. I don't. Whoa. Uh, I don't limit him to a county. You know, we, when we go to compete, we go to compete for nation for national champ. I know y'all played against the dream team. They're a nationally ranked team, and y'all came in like second place. Yeah, in a I tournament think, that I, I recorded. Think he, I think he threw a nice touchdown pass. On the I think he did team. too. That that is actually that is actually so. going to be on um on episode uh, six, which is coming out pretty soon. But we we've actually, if you go to the Facebook page, first and ten Atlanta, we've got you can. There's a link there. To where you can click on the link and you can watch all five episodes. Mm -hmm. They're they're up now. You can, as a matter of fact, you watch some of the episodes. Yeah, I think episode. you probably watched all the episodes. Yeah. But I got DYJ and at least a couple of those. And that yeah. championship game against the Dream Team is that team stacked? That team is what you consider as. How did they recruit all them big? Some of them kids look like they should be. Man, playing in college or at least high school, I know. Hey, I'm going to give it to the coach, man. Coach Sean, one of the best coaches I've seen in, in, in youth football. He got, man, he tripped me out. He'd be like, run, 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 run. He, that's all he's saying. I mean, they do. Fair, they move, man, say, they play, they they play, they play like a well-oiled machine. Great team. Great team. And I don't, I, you know what? One thing about his coaching, and I, I don't knock coaches for doing this mm -hmm. because your style of coaching is different, but I've never, I never hear him swear or use a curse word at his players he'll tell him get your tail off the field he sound like an old 70 year get your tail off the field you don't want to block yeah and he don't play i like that one he's real like, stern man he like, can he say he hey and everybody like they do. jump up yeah he don't allow them to go halfway you know do half speed stuff no 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 everything is yeah, full I'm speed saying. they run a play here run around 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 and that be it yeah you see how they did us man they came on the football field we weren't even we weren't even ready for man they had the scored two touchdowns <laughs> before they before y'all got them strapped up y'all helmets i was like whoa we already played of course three four games y'all had played four games that day but this dream team out of atlanta i got to get coach sean coach sean if you're out there and you're listening or you're watching this man we got to get you in the studio we got to bring the dream team here. I got to get DYJ in here. As a matter of fact, we're going to try and get um, Coach uh, Kite on the phone here and get a call in with us and get this conversation. Now, listen, there is a rumor. Now, notice I say this is a rumor. Here at First and Ten Atlanta, we, we hear both sides of any argument. We hear both because during the season, you're going to get a lot of stuff that's going to be going on, a lot of drama. And we're not one-sided or one-dimensional. So if we speak on something and we allow one side to speak, We'll, uh, we, we, there's an open opportunity that we'll uh, have the other side to speak. So, But there is a rumor um, regarding DYJ that there was a coach at DYJ, and he left DYJ, went to another team, which is called the Cater Army in that program there, 
Nothing against either of the programs, but I'm just reporting a rumor, and that he took some players. Is that true? Well, you know, I I, I keep my ears to the streets, man. So well, that's what we I do here. Much, so we're just trying I to pretty much um can confirm that rumor is pretty much true, man. Well, it's not a rumor if you're confirming it. It's I'm the truth now. The truth. I, from from my understanding, he's a coach. Uh, I don't or used to be affiliated with your program. Because you're affiliated with the program. Okay. And, and then he took he took players. like six seven players and uh, went to another about, team. About eight players, man. About eight almost, players. Almost crippled our team. But we Whoa! Keep the crowd back, man. Get out, get other players. Come on back in, and well, know. Coach Kite, we gonna get him on the phone here. Uh, now, what do you think about that? If you're out there, even even if you're out there and you're listening um, here at First and Ten Atlanta, you're listening. We want to be able to to let you know that. Um, what do you think? What are you thinking on that? Is it fair for a coach to take players, be with one program, and then take those players and go to another program? And 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 well, what I do you say, think? I as as a coach um who has players that been that went to another program that wait, wait a minute wait a minute we got coach kite on the phone coach kite oh this is coach kite right here buddy who am i speaking with coach kite coach kite is he saying coach fitz coach. you know him coach coach kite anthony coach kite you know, talk anthony. to him anthony that's your coach coach oh this 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 is coach tick oh, okay coach yeah. tick yeah, this is okay. We got. Co I'm sorry. I was thinking you was Coach Kite. We got Coach Tick. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is Coach Tick. Um, Cleveland. He actually he has a barber shop on Cleveland Avenue. He actually, he's one of our sponsors for the day for this show. Um, we got Coach Tick on the line. Cleveland Avenue barber shop. Coach Tick, how long have you been coaching, man? About 15, 20 years. About fifteen to twenty years. So tell me, what age group have you had? Cause I know a couple uh, of years ago y'all won a championship. What age group do you, did you have when you went to that championship? And tell us a little bit about that. Uh, we won. Uh, we won. Well, uh, the first year about what it was twenty twenty when we first year about twenty fourteen to the yeah. We won a uh, Frank Ski. That was seven under. Oh, well, that was the Frank Ski Bowl yeah. that y'all won. But you've been coaching yeah. about twenty years. Now we got a topic here. We had we had a coach that was from. There was a coach from DYJ, and he was affiliated with that program. And here recently, he left that program and went to Decatur Army, but he took like eight players from the team. What, now, what is your take? Has that ever happened to you in your 20-year career? And what do you think about that? Do you think Yeah, man, that, that, yeah, it, it, it is what it is. That happens all the time. A lot of times, uh, the coaches get uh, uh, put in cool with the kids, and the kids start liking them. And then they'll say, these are my kids, and the, and the other coaches are, uh, are take with the other kids, and then they'll take the ones that like them, and the other kids will be left with the, with right. the leftovers. So that happens all the time now, man. That's the way they go. They call it combining teams, try to get better than one of them. Just. Right. So you, you, you think that's a you, – you, so that that's just a normal run of how things go with you football, huh? Yeah, that's it now. So it's it's about the recruitment. It, Tell it, me this. used to be – yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. It used to be a time when, when, when it used to be a time when uh, dudes just grind. Now everybody's trying to combine or get players from other teams. Uh, you know, they, you you groom them, you groom them, and then the other guys are, are, are just take what they groom, and then they'll be they'll, they'll just go to their program. They don't have to do any work. So That's nowadays it's now. more so like if you're in the coaching, basically all you uh, pretty much you grooming, you possibly can be grooming a player for another coach to come and take away from you, huh? Oh yeah, if you got now nowadays, it all depends on who's going to pay for everything. If somebody's going to pay for something for them, they go to the opposite team. I mean, it is what it is. 